Monsieur Debian, you have been my leading manager for the past ten years. I am here to thank you for your service and hope you have a good retirement. <laughs> hope you have a good retirement. What am I thinking? <clears throat> I am here to thank you for your service and wish you the best of luck in your future endeavors. What is the meaning of this? It's the ghost! Little fool, have you seen him? As plainly as I see you now. <laughs> if that was a ghost, he was very ugly. He he stood in between the two set pieces just off the stage. I remember seeing him with a black cloak and a large black hat. He essentially came out the wall. Please, you all see the ghost everywhere. Gabriel says that wherever the ghost is, you also see the Persian nearby. Joseph McKay saw the ghost too. That's how I knew what we saw of Joey was a ghost. He told us one night what he looks like. And what does his ghost look like? He's extraordinarily thin and his dress coat hangs on a skeleton frame. His eyes are so deep that you can hardly see the fixed pupils. You just see two big black holes in the dead man's skull. His nose is so little for talking about that you can't see its side face. And the absence of that nose is a horrible thing to look at. All the hair he has is three or four long dark locks in his forehead and behind his ears. It's the ghost! Who's there? Is there anyone behind the door? Oh yes, yes, of course there is. Whatever you do, don't open that door. Oh lord, don't open that door! There's no one out there. Still, we saw him. He must be somewhere prowling about. I shan't go back to dress. We had better all go down to the foyer together at once, for the speech, and we'll come up again together. Come, children, pull yourselves together. I dare say no one has ever truly seen a ghost. But, but we saw him. We saw him just now. He's back. Me, me, are you there? That's Mother's voice! I wonder what's wrong. How awful! How awful! What's wrong? Oh, Joseph Bouquet! He, he, he's dead! Oh, he was found hanging in the lower third cellar. It must have been the ghost! I didn't say anything, I swear! I shall never be able to recite my speech. Who is that girl? Huh? That's Christine Dye.
You see her? The woman fainted. You look like fainting yourself. What's the matter? She never sang like that before in our childhood. Don't you think, Doctor, that those gentlemen had better clear the room? There's no breathing here. You're quite right. <sighs> Monsieur, who are you? Mademoiselle, I am the little boy who went into the sea to rescue your scarf. <laughs> Mademoiselle, since you are pleased not to recognize me, I would like to say something to you in private. Something very important. When I am better, do you mind? You have been very kind. <laughs> yes, you must go. Leave me to attend, Mademoiselle. I am not ill now. Thank you, Doctor. I would like to be alone. Please go away, all of you. Leave me. I feel very restless this evening. She's not herself tonight. She's usually so gentle. Is your mistress all right? Yes, yes, my lady is quite well. She wishes for no one to disturb her. She wished to be left alone for me! I did tell her I wish to speak to her privately. Maybe. Christine, you must love me. How can you talk like that? When I sing only for you! Are you very tired? Oh, tonight I gave you my soul and I am dead! Your soul is a beautiful thing, child. And I thank you. No emperor ever received so fair a gift. The angels surely wept tonight. There is someone here. What are you hiding for? You shan't leave here until I let you. If you don't answer me, you're a coward. But I'll expose you. What the? Am I going mad? Might I congratulate you on what a successful time you spent working at the opera. You truly set the standard of what good business is meant to be. Thank you, thank you. I could never have done it without the wonderful support of my staff and patrons, of course. Hmm, thank you. Well, what's that over there on the other side of the table? I... I don't know. Did you invite him? No. Do you? No, that's why I'm asking you, Armand. Can we get back to- Hey, you! Who are you? As I was saying- Forgive me, Monsieur, but I was trying to see who was at the end of the- table? Where did he go? I think it's finally time I came clean about this. About what? The opera ghost. <laughs> the what? Well, since the construction of the Paris Opera House in 1861, there's been reports of a man in a dress coat with a shrunken S head stalking the halls of the opera. We try to ignore him if possible, but in the end he always is noticed by the staff and patrons alike. He's most prominent in box five on the grand tier. Disembodied voices, laughter, screams, touching, and so on, he always demands a monthly allowance of 20,000 francs a month, just as he doesn't do anything that could possibly 
harm someone. 20,000 francs. I'm sorry, gentlemen, but I must take my leave or I might miss my train. Good luck to you both. I have taken the liberty to leave the ghost memorandum on the desk. Memorandum? Yes, take a look. It's quite important you follow the rules. Goodbye, gentlemen. Did did the ghost really appear in the manager's office? Yes, just as I see you now. What are you two doing up so late? We are selling box five. But that's the ghost box. Have you seen the ghost? No. Have you seen him in this box? No, we haven't seen him there. But Madame Jury has. She brings him his program every evening. She does? And has she seen him in there? No, but she hears him all the time. And he'll leave her little gifts for her work. Then why not sell the box if no one has seen him? I'll be having a word with Madame Jury. I'd like to have a word with her about these supposed gifts he leaves. I heard the ballet girls talking about the ghost in, the, in box five again. Ah, this is outrageous. Everyone's making a big deal over a little premonition. <laughs> yes, as you said, no one's actually seen the ghost in box five. It is obviously their imagination. I mean, really, a ghost in box five. Where do you think they came up with that idea? I have no idea. What's this? It wasn't on the desk a moment ago. Oh, stop it. You're as bad as the ballet girls. You probably forgot it was on the desk. It says it's from the opera ghost. Oh, good. Let's hear what the ghost has to say to us then. Dear Mr. Manager, I, I am, am sorry, sorry to, to have to trouble you at a time when you must be so very busy. Renewing important engagements, signing fresh ones, and generally displaying your excellent taste. I know what you have done for Kalata, Sorelli, and Little Jamies, and for a few others whose admirable qualities of talent or genius you have suspected. Of course, when I use these words, I do not mean to apply them to La Colata, who sings like a squirt, and who ought never to have been allowed to leave the ambassadeurs in the Café Jacquin, nor to La Sorelli, who owes her success mainly to the coach builders, nor to Little Jamies, who dances like a calf in a field. And I'm not speaking of Christine Daae either. The her genius is certain, whereas your jealousy prevents her from creating any important part. When all is said, you're free to conduct your little business as you think best. All the same, I should like to take advantage of the fact that you have not yet turned Christine Daae out of doors by hearing her this evening in the part of Cybele as that of Margarita has been forbidden from her since her triumph of the other evening. And I will ask you not to dispose of my box today, nor on the following days. For I cannot end this letter without telling you how disagreeably surprised I have been once or twice to hear on arriving at the opera that my box had been sold by your orders. I did not protest, first because I dislike scandal. And second, because I thought that your predecessor, Monsieur Debigny, who is always charming to me, had neglected before leaving to mention my little fads to you. And this reply proves that you know all about my memorandum book, and consequently that you are treating me with outrageous contempt. If you wish to live in peace, you must not begin by taking away my private box. Believe me, dear Mr. Managers. Without prejudice to these little observations. Your, Your most, most humble, humble and obedient, obedient servant, self. OG. OG? Opera Ghost Armand. Well, obviously, Opera Ghost Richard. My guess is, is that Debian is behind this, trying to scare us into giving him a private box and comparing us to little Jamie, Sorelli, and La Carlotta. What are you getting at? You think Debian sent that note? Yes, just think about it. He is gone, and now he wishes for a yearly box to stay in for free. Quite the accusation for mine. Shall I write to him and ask about it? Please do, 
and when he replies, inform me right away. So, how should we continue with the Box 5 issue? I say we go ahead and sell it like planned. How about we give it to the Count de Marcelli? Yes, good idea. Hello, madame. Dear, did you say something? Yawn. What? And nothing. Yawn. Gasp. What the? I thought we talked about not touching me like that in public. My dear, I think you're losing your mind. You thwacked my breast. I'm correct. You're absolutely mad. Just watch the opera. Yawn. Good lord. The nerve of some nobleman. Madame, I do believe you have a misunderstanding of the situation. Your husband is not doing anything to you, but in fact, I am. And just who are you? I am the Opera Ghost, madame. Gosp. Monsieur le Vicomte, there's a letter here for you from uh, Christine Dyer? Quick, I need a ticket to Paro. Yes, right away, Monsieur le Vicomte. Monsieur, I have not forgotten the little boy who went into the sea to rescue my scarf. I feel that I must write to you today when I'm going to Paros in fulfillment of a sacred duty. Tomorrow is the anniversary of the death of my poor father, whom you knew and who was very fond of you. He is buried there with his violin in the graveyard of the little church at the bottom of the slope where we used to play as children. Beside the road where, when we were a little bigger, we said goodbye for the last time. What can I do for you, sir? I need a room for the night, please. All right. Let me go in the back to see if we have a room available. Thank you. So you have come. I felt that I should find you here when I came back from Mass. Someone told me so, at the church. Who? Why, my poor father. Did your father tell you that I love you, Christine? And that I cannot live without you? Me? You are dreaming, my friend. <laughs> I am quite serious. Uh, I do not make you come to tell me such things as that. You made me come, Christine. You knew that your letter would not leave me indignant and that I should hasten to Paros. How can you have thought that, if you did not think I loved you? I thought you wouldn't remember our games here, as children, in which my father so often enjoyed. I really don't know what I thought. Perhaps I was wrong to write to you, 
This anniversary and your sudden appearance in my room at the opera the other evening reminded me of the time long past and made me write to you as the little girl that I then was. When you saw me in your dressing room, was that the first time you noticed me? No. I had seen you several times in your brother's box, and also on the stage. But then why? When you saw me in your room, at your side, reminding you that I had rescued your scarf from the sea, why did you answer as though you did not know me? And also, why did you laugh? You don't answer. Well, I will answer for you. It was because there was one in the room who was in your way, Christine. Someone that you did not wish to know that you could be interested in anyone else. If anyone was in my way that evening, it was yourself, since I told you to leave the room. Yes, so that you might remain with the other! What are you saying, Monsieur? And to what other do you refer? To the man whom you said I sing only for you! Tonight I give you my soul, and I am dead. Then you were listening behind the door? Yes, because I love you. And I wanted to speak to you. And then I heard everything. You heard what? He said to you, Christine, you must love me. Go on. Uh, and then I uh, heard him reply when... You said you had given him your soul. Your soul is a beautiful thing, child, and I thank you. No emperor ever received so fair a gift. The angels wept tonight. <laughs> Christine? Raul, forgive me. I must be alone. Here you are, sir. Room 240. Thank you.
Can you believe this? Another note from this ghost demanding we remove Signora Carlotta from the performance tonight and replace her with Miss, Miss Daae? Outrageous. Carlotta is the more famed and known star. Now, I got word from one of the ballet girls that the ghost is in box five at this very minute. Now, I tell you, this ghost was probably no more than Madame Giri. I did good by removing her from tending to this wing of boxes. Have a feeling. Um, Richard, I don't know about this. You know how I feel about ghosts. Oh, come, come, Armand. We know for a fact there is no real ghost, but in fact it is just a man playing a silly game with us. Yes, so you said. All right, let's see what everyone is talking about. You, you saw it too, right? Yes, I saw it. Wait, if it's just a man, they... Then why are we scared? Why don't we speak to him? Her? It? You're right. Monsieur, I... He... He's gone! But... But how? We were standing right outside. You... You don't think? No. He... He... Must have been just a hallucination. I don't know from my... It... It seemed pretty real. He isn't real. These people are making fools of us. It will be Carlotta singing the Faust on Saturday and we shall watch the performance from Box 5 on the Grand Tier. So, it is to be war between us then. If you still care about peace, here is my ultimatum. It consists of the four following conditions. Number one, you must give me back my private box, and I wish it to be at my free disposal from henceforward. Number two, the part of Margarita shall be sung this evening by Christine Daae. Never mind about Colotta, she will be ill. Number three, I absolutely insist upon the good and loyal services of Madame Giry, my box keeper, whom you will reinstate in her functions forthwith. Number four, let me know by a letter handed to Madame Giry, who will see that it reaches me, that you accept, as your predecessors did, the conditions in my memorandum book relating to my monthly allowance. I will inform you later how you are to pay me. If you refuse, you will give Faust tonight in a house with a curse upon it. Take my advice and be warned in time. OG. If you appear tonight, you must be prepared for a great misfortune. At the moment when you open your mouth to sing, a misfortune worse than death. Someone is making a fool of me. It's probably a trick by Christine Daae. Though her voice is pretty, it doesn't compare to my angelic voice. We shall see. Madame Carlotta, it is Monsieur Richard's private secretary for you. He says it's quite urgent. See, what is going on? Letters? Oh, yes, I got one. I tell you, this is all a plot from that little toad, Christine Daae. What? No! I will not be staying home tonight. I shall sing tonight. Rain, fire, or hell, I shall be there. You have a bad cold. If you are wise, you will see that it is madness to try to sing tonight. We shall see. Le ciel pâlit devant l'aube 
Well, has the ghost whispered a word in your ear yet? Wait, don't be in such a hurry. The performance has only begun, and you know that the ghost does not actually come until the middle of the first act. Ah. House, Darmond. Surprising for a house with a curse upon it. Act one done. Our ghost must be late. Ah, indeed. Do you remember the angel of music?
the night, Mr. Managers. She is seen to bring down the chandelier! <laughs>